The assassin tries to goad the Jedi into a fight by saying that she thought The Last Jedi was a good movie. <laughs> the girl eventually returns to her room where she finds the Jedi Knight polishing his lightsaber, if you know what I mean. She learns of Master Trinity's death and that she's a suspect when the bartender busts in and says, That's her. That's the idiot that liked The Last Jedi. And she killed someone. He and his Padawan set out to track Osha down and they catch Yord force choking the chicken again. She comes to attack this Jedi Master, but she needs him to make the first move, so she tries really hard to get him to flinch. The deed gets interrupted when another Jedi comes around to sniff Master Torben while he's deep in meditation, but he instead smells something funky going on. May meets with this apothecary and asks for help making a poison, but he whips up some Mountain Dew instead. And she easily talks the Jedi Master into liquid seppuku, brought to you by Mountain Dew. She gets frisky with this thorny woman who tells her exactly how she likes it. A firm hand is required. And Osha branches off to talk to a Wookiee because after spending her whole life with that village of idiots, even a grunting rug sounds like a genius. A bunch of Jedi in cheap makeup watch a replay of May's fighting and break it down like it's Sports Center. In the hall, Master Squid mentions how ironic it is that Master Time Waster is talking shit after the mess she left in the bathroom last week, and everyone overhears it. They put aside their crappy argument and come up with a plan to lure Mei out with a trap, using Osha as bait. It sounds like a job for Master Bator. They dress Osha in a space trash bag befitting of her station, and Master Bator makes a public apology after he was caught feeding the geese in the Jedi Temple courtyard yesterday. Osha is checking her breasts for lumps, and an overgrown gopher who's leering at her says, Nice! Master Bator tells Mei that this trash bag really suits her, and Master Soul thinks he hears the Wookiee Jedi Kelnaka in the distance. The gopher says that this part of the forest smells like balls, probably due to these giant black nut sacks on the trees, which Osha just can't help but touch. May stops for a beer, but her sidekick urges her to continue, saying, You must complete your trials. I, I mean, you should stick with it, for the master, whoever he is. And then she leaves him hanging in disbelief, much like everyone watching this show. She reaches Kalnaka's shanty first, where she sees that the master just closed his Pornhub window. But then we see that the real gaping gash is the fresh wound on his chest. The Jedi valiantly charge in, and Darth Chuckles tosses Osha aside like the trash she is, and uses Force Fart on the group, bringing this episode to an explosive, stinky end. She sees a Jedi all tuckered out from the fight, before seeing that the Master is busy making Jedi kebab. All the red shirt Jedi get cut down. The Master is even blocking blows with his helmet, which really turns off these two Jedi. The overgrown gopher leads them away, but Osha wants to go back. Master Bator is very reluctant, however, saying he really needs to get back to the ship for a... thing. Master Squid wants to see the Master's face, and the Master says, I thought you liked masks, and his PTSD is in full swing now. The very white Padawan finally uses enough police brutality to subdue Mei, but Chuckles pulls out his cell phone and puts a stop to it. Osha hears whispers and tells Master Bator that they have to go back, and he accepts that he won't be able to scratch Yoda behind the ears anytime soon. Look that one up, by the way. The Padawan breaks the Master's helmet, and she gets the first exclusive face reveal, before he finishes embarrassingly fast in three pumps. Osha has a very stupid idea about how to bring the Master back to the light side, and Darth chuckles, the first Sith seen in 900 years, apparently finds five bugs more formidable than six Jedi Masters, and they carry him off like the flying monkeys from Wizard of Oz. May doesn't have time to get her hair did, so she gives herself a cut in the dumbest way possible. Osha, in quotations, returns to Master Squid, and he says, Ugh, why do you smell like burnt hair? May looks around the ship while the gopher inhales her sweet stench. He steps out of the water, brandishing a small lightsaber of his own, and he has to tell Osha, My eyes are up here. We learn that Kamir used to be a Jedi a really long time ago, and Osha brags about how strong Master Squid is, and he responds by saying that you're easily twice as strong as Squid, because you're a woman, and you're black. He tells her that if she wants to leave, she just has to swim out to that ship, but he immediately adds that he doesn't mean to assume that she can or can't swim. He knows it's complicated and there's socioeconomic factors, and he should probably just stop talking. May is checking on the ship when the gopher rushes in to hump her leg, before the droid Hak is in her eye. Kamir talks to Osha about the dark side of the Force, and she says that's the dark side, 
and he says it's just semantics, and she calls him anti-semantic, and it's clear that she's not really understanding the conversation. The Jedi, much like Leslie Headland, turn to Harvey Weinstein for guidance before they set off into the Forbidden Forest. The rescue team finds the Padawan and Master Bator, who's stiffer than ever before. Kelnaka is metal detecting because that's what you do when you're 200 years old. He's just missing some white New Balance shoes. Trinity tries to talk to Master Squid about her Padawan, but she can tell that he needs to fart before they can talk, so she encourages him to let it out. That's there you go. That's a big boy. Squid hops on his CGI 9000 and finds the mystical frozen urine tree. Master Squid looks in on the witch's teachings and catches them worshipping this planet's butthole. She fails the test so spectacularly that Trinity is forced to ask May if she's special. I don't know. Mama said. Mama says that. Mama says. Mama. Mama said it. Thank you for explaining that to me. Torben gets jacked up by the thought that these girls are his ticket home and screams, It's Torben time! While the witches prepare for battle, May starts a fire and just stares at it, calling for her mom. But with two moms, each has plausible deniability, so neither come to help her. Master Trinity gets uploaded into the Matrix and says, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you. Osha wakes up and asks what happened, and Squid says, Remember your sister? She's dead! Gone forever! Died a horrible, painful death! Gone, gone, gone! This sends the ship careening through Brendock's rings. May also loses control, not from any collision, but because the escape ship is made by Boeing. But then, out of nowhere, Kamir asks Osha to prom. Mom. No. He says, that's fine. I'll just ask your sister. She looks the same. Master Time Waster is on the phone verbally abusing a Chinese spam caller when String Bing tells her that Master Squid has been located on Brendock. Osha wrongly assumes that Kamir is Asian and locks him out of the flying controls as they arrive on the planet. Master Squid gets tired of looking for May and devises an evil plan to draw her out. So he screams the N-word, but Darth Chuckles is right behind him, saying, I heard what you said. Chuckles throws the sabers at Squid, but Squid says, I do not consent, as he pushes away all three, knocking down Kamir, who gets up, saying, Let me get my shoes, let me get my shoes. Osha finds May in their old room, and May says, Oh shit, and her sister says, No, it, it's Osha. But Kamir awkwardly interrupts this moment by asking May to prom. No. Her fresh dark side nail polish gets all over the Saber's crystal, and Squid forgives her as she says, Witness the power of the fart side, squeezing out his last fart. <laughs> Chuckles picks another bad time to try and ask Osha to prom again, and she says no means no, as her mood ring lightsaber tells us it might be her time of the month. The Jedi arrive and arrest Mei for being a minority in public, and she's brought to Coruscant to meet with Master Time Waster. The senator from Baltimore says, See? The Jedi are the reason everything's so corrupt around here, and all the politicians covered in gold and silk nod in agreement. Kamir shuffles closer to Osha and gives her lightsaber a reach around, then they hold hands as Kamir promises to teach her how to swim. 